Hello friends and welcome to Gus McDowell Games. My name is Nick McDowell. Today we are playing the second mission in the Jersey Blockade campaign mod for Naval War Arctic Circle, titled France and Britain Clash. As always, we'll start with a peek at the French briefing before playing as the United Kingdom. Perfidious Albion, not content with preventing our fishers from earning a living, the British are now sending their fleet into French waters to blockade Carteret. This is unacceptable. Further, we have social media reports that they have attacked our vessels with rifles and Molotov cocktails. We need to send the British a strong message. Our objectives are to stop the British entering our waters by any means necessary. You are authorised to use force to defend yourself from British violence and to stop the blockade before it begins. So now this is the uh, United Kingdom side's briefing, which we'll read as we start the game. Skipper, the situation off Jersey seems to be getting serious. Admiralty want us to stop the French from firing on our fishing vessels. The British ships are on the radio saying they're being fired at. So message date time group 2021, May the 12th at 11am from the Admiralty to HMS Defender. Situation. Jersey blockade has intensified and negotiations have not resolved post-Brexit fisheries dispute. Media reports French boat has rammed British fishing vessel, with protests at UK Embassy in Paris and increased customs checks at Calais. Local Jersey sources indicate multiple British fishing vessels about to enter French waters and blockade Carteret in retaliation. Her Majesty's government does not wish to inflame the situation, but must protect British vessels. Intel reports French patrol vessel has use of force authority to prevent British fishing vessels entering the EEZ, the exclusive economic zone. The French Navy has moved Rafale M squadron to Land of Viziau and overflown Jersey with Dassault Falcon 200. Objectives. Mission. HMS Defender is to interdict French patrol vessel in order to protect British fishing vessel and prevent escalation. Execution, coordination... AWACS available from RAF Waddington if required, uh, rules of engagement, weapons tight, use of force not authorised except in self-defence or defence of British fishing vessels. Do not enter French waters. Admin and log and command and sig were no change. So our objectives on the top right there, protect the British fleet for 40 minutes. And we will just zoom in now on the HMS Defender. Our first priority will be to launch a helicopter. We will launch the Lynx Wildcat uh, naval strike profile. Okay, and the helicopter's off doing its business. And next we will look into uh, setting up our AWACS, the E3 Sentry, activating our radar, and also um, setting the flight profile to a very high but relatively slow flight profile. This will not only give us enhanced situational awareness, but it will also record anything that occurs, which might become useful uh, later on. Okay, so the helicopter is now well on its way, going back to the Defender. So we have the, uh, in terms of our weapons, while we do have a good range with our 4.5 inch gun, uh, we are covering right now the British fleet, but not the French patrol vessels. We have an Ehrlichan 30mm, which is probably our first weapon of choice, because it's our, our lowest. We have harpoons, but in this scenario, harpoons are something of uh, overkill. Uh, the 4.5 inch guns is probably going to be our plan B uh, weapon of choice um, if, if, we, if the Oerlich and 30mm are insufficient. So we'll speed up time and uh, provide a little bit of extra background. The first mission in this series was closely based on events in real life. A French fishing fleet did in fact blockade the harbour of saint Helier in the Channel Island of Jersey in May 2021 as part of a fishing rights dispute. Both Britain and France sent patrol vessels to keep an eye on things. In real life, emotions ran high on both sides. Famed by inflammatory media rhetoric, a British vessel was rammed by a French boat, and a French minister threatened to cut electricity to the island of Jersey. In a somewhat Pythonesque response, an historical reenactor on Jersey reportedly fired an antique musket in the general direction of France. 
However, the situation was resolved peacefully by negotiations. If you haven't seen the first mission, be sure to check it out. In this mission, uh, we depart from historical events and move down an alternate history pathway in which events get out of hand. In a crisis, uh, both sides are making decisions based on imperfect information and both risk miscalculation, escalation and inadvertent war. Barbara Tuchman's work, The Guns of August, details how cycles of action, reaction and counteraction led European nations into the First World War, the second deadliest conflict in human history. Each choice may have seemed rational in its own context, but the overall outcome was not. Graham Allison's work on the Cuban Missile Crisis shows how foreign policy and military crisis behaviours can be understood not just as the deliberate actions of states as unitary rational decision makers maximising utility, but as the sometimes unintended outcomes and outputs of organisational processes and and standing on standard operating procedures and even bureaucratic politics. In the Cuban Missile Crisis, these cycles of action, reaction and counteraction were only broken at the highest levels, showing how close the world came to a strategic miscalculation that could have started the world's largest and last war. In other words, events can be driven by the actions, reactions and counteractions of commanders on the spot in ways that were not anticipated or intended by more senior or national leaders. A little misinformation can persuade commanders to make tactical miscalculations, and events can create a momentum of their own, leading to strategic miscalculations that can have terrible consequences. While it is unlikely that this would happen between habitual allies such as France and Britain in 2021, there are many other flashpoints around the world where it is more likely that events could unfold in this way. In our scenario, we've used specific information injects to foster miscalculations and thus escalate the situation into an unintended conflict. This information will later prove to be false, but the respective commanders do not know this yet. The French are operating on the belief that British vessels have already attacked French vessels and that shots have been fired. They have been authorised to use force to prevent British vessels from counter-blockading the French port of Carteret. If radio calls are unanswered, they will fire shots across the bow of the British ships, a customary method of signalling a ship to stop prior to a visit, board, search and seizure or VBSS operation. The British have been tasked to protect their fishing vessels from French aggression. Use of horse has been authorised, thus lowering the threshold for action, and they have just received reports over the radio that their vessels are being fired upon. The helicopter will then deliver imagery that seems to confirm that the French have acted first and are attacking civilian fishing vessels leading the commander to believe the British ship must respond in accordance with its orders. The British commander gets on the radio to warn the French vessels to cease firing, but receives radio reports that firing continues. It's at this point that we're closing in now on the French vessels, almost within range of our Ehrlichan 30mm cannons. And the British commander now believes the French are still not responding to the direction to cease firing and targets them with the Ehrlichan 30mm. First to be hit, the Athos. Another shot to the Themis this time. And the Themis is hit. Now at this point, of course the skipper could decide to cease firing, but over the radio the British fishing vessels are reporting that they are still receiving fire. It is likely that the British fishing vessels are mistaking the Erdogan 30mm fire uh, from the British uh, for uh, machine gun fire across their bows from the French. So the, there we go, the Erdogan 30mm continues to fire. And the Athos is now on fire.
and again targeting Athos and the Themis, both of which are now on fire. The Themis is now down to 67% health and has a major fire on board. Now on both sides, both commanders are focused on the situations confronting them directly and the decisions they must make right here and right now, more so than the resolution of the overall strategic situation. Thos heat again. And the Themos shortly afterwards. Of course, in real life, going kinetic is a major escalation. In the context of France and Britain, at least in 2021, the CEO of HMS Defender would be expected to exercise a lot more restraint than what we have shown here. But this is an alternate history, a what-if scenario. In many flashpoints, both sides have much less trust, there is a history of conflict and violence, and commanders on both sides feel pressured to respond with strength to perceived aggression. Thus starting the action, reaction and counteraction cycle. Themis is now down to 42% with a major fire. and the Athos is destroyed and starts to sink. The Themis is now down to under 30% health with a severe fire on board. The British fishing vessels continue to report that they are receiving fire, of course mistaking the Ehrlichan 30mm cannon fire. targeting continues. Now we've just had a detection of a fixed wing aircraft group, which we'll come back to in a minute. And the Themis is now down to 1% health, severe fire is raging on board, and the vessel is about to sink. We can see Carteret here, and this is the port of Carteret, and we can see from Carteret they can clearly see the action that's been happening. You can even see out to the island of Jersey in the distance. And the last shot, and the Themis is sunk. as we can see here. Now earlier we had that report of the fixed wing air group, so let's have a look at that, quickly assess this threat or potential threat. And uh, this has been identified, the HMS Defender has identified this as a Rafale M group of two aircraft, and it looks like they are they have launched out of Landivisiao. 
the Bas Aero Naval de Land Divisiao here, which is the base for the Rafale M fighters. And it's unknown what their flight profile is. Uh, it could be air superiority, could be naval strike. So here are the two fighters and it does appear however that they are headed in a fairly direct line that will cross the island of Jersey, the Jersey airport, the port of St. Helier, and head directly to HMS Defender and the British fishing fleet. So this is probably a good time to turn on our radar and to paint these targets and to let them know that we have them on radar. We'll check our weapons. We have Asta 30s with that they're in range of at the moment. We also have Asta 15s. These are surface-to-air missiles. Smaller range and they do cover Jersey Airport and the Port of St. Helier and the fishing fleet and of course HMS Defender but doesn't leave us much time to react. Uh, so we'll probably select the Asta 30s in case we need uh, to use surface-to-air missiles for any reason. That just gives us a bit more time and space with these longer-range surface-to-air missiles. So the Rafale M's are still tracking directly towards HMS Defender, directly towards the British fishing fleet, and directly towards the island of Jersey, Port of St. Helier and Jersey Airport. So they're clearly a potential threat, but they haven't actually done anything yet, so we're still just going to observe. Okay, so we can see St. Helier and Jersey Airport there on the map, and uh, the Rafale M's. Uh, headed directly towards those two pieces of civilian infrastructure as well as the British fishing fleet and the HMS Defender. Okay, the, the, the aircraft have now turned away and it looks like they have launched Exocet missiles uh, which are naval strike missiles probably headed towards the HMS Defender possibly towards the fishing fleet. Looks like there might be two missiles and uh, you know all of those people with a sense of history will know that British destroyers and frigates and exosets do not have a happy history together. So we will definitely need to respond to this missile launch um, with our SAMs, and we will uh, again turn uh, choose the Aster 30s. We'll target the exosets and launch. The Rafale M's have both turned away, so they have probably been carrying one Exocet each. Having launched them, they are now uh, returning out of, out of the area. And you can see, despite all of the action and a missile launch, that there's a cheeky fishing vessel there trying to get past the Defender and still head towards Carteret. So um, our mission was to try and... part of our implied task of our mission was to try and prevent that, but it doesn't seem to have succeeded. So our SAMs, our Asta 30s, are tracking towards the Exocets. And it looks like, yep, we potentially knocked out one Exocet, but there's still one, one other Exocet tracking towards us. And both of our Asta 30s have done part of the job. You can see the Exocet there tracking towards Jersey with the airport on the left and the port on the right. So time to re-engage with another pair of Asta 30 surface-to-air missiles. You'll note at this stage that we haven't engaged the Rafales themselves, even though they're within range of the surface-to-air missiles, and that is a deliberate choice. So here's our SAM missile going over Jersey, past the high ground, past the Port of St. Helio, Jersey Airport on the right, tracking towards the Exocet, and yep, looks like the we have successfully shot down the second Exocet missile. So the choice to not target the Rafale was a deliberate one, because the, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we didn't want to escalate the situation further than it was already at. Uh, and the, the Rafales, this not being um, a situation of, of a declared war, the Rafales do not present a current threat to Jersey or the fishing fleet or the HMS Defender. So there's really no case to be made for self-defense, firing on these Rafales in self-defense at this point. So we've chosen not to engage, uh, to stay within our rules of engagement, which, as you'll recall, only permitted us to fire in self-defence or in defence of the British fishing vessels or civilian infrastructure. 
So you see in the background of this the game models terrain features, although they can be a little indistinct and hard to recognize because of the, the graphics. Um, nonetheless, you can still see um, the dips and folds in terrain that are modeled in the game. And a beautiful shot of the Raphaels crossing the French coast. And at this stage we still have another 10 minutes or so left in our mission to protect the British fishing vessels. So we might leave it here for a little bit and then rejoin a little later on. Okay, so the HMS Defender is here. You can see the port of Carteret in the background. We have the British fishing vessels, which have pretty much ignored the Defender and are still heading towards Carteret to conduct a counter blockade, which is, of course, not ideal. So to summarize what just happened, we have perceived action by the French patrol vessels, which apparently fired on the British fishing vessels, but actually fired warning shots across the bow. This is the first miscalculation. We then have a reaction, an escalation by the British destroyer firing on and sinking the two French patrol vessels. Finally, we have a counteraction and further escalation by the French launching Rafale M aircraft in a naval strike profile, and these launch Exocet missiles on a course that will cross Jersey towards the HMS Defender and British fishing fleet. The British destroyer engages and destroys the Exocet missiles without further loss of life and does not engage the Rafale M aircraft as these do not present an immediate threat. So that's the end of mission two. Uh, two surface ships destroyed. Uh, doesn't record their two Exocet missiles downed, but otherwise no casualties. As always, thanks for watching. Check out the Jersey Blockade playlist on our channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. And stay tuned for the next episode.